Can you imagine being the number one ranked player in any sport in your country, yet still have to be at a point where you are counting pennies and not able to potentially not just compete in the sport further, but also make ends meet for yourself? It seems like a bit of a weird situation considering I just said that an athlete could be their top ranked in their particular country but still be struggling, right? It doesn't seem like it's right yet. That is exactly what has been happening with the man you can see on your screen, Sumit Nagal. Now, Nagal is of course uh, the highest ranked uh, men's singles tennis player currently in the country. He's ranked at 159 in the ATP Tour. But the sad realities of a uh, being the highest rank in a sport, which sadly not a lot of people watch or which might not have as much of a fan following as other sports and which also is worth noting is a very expensive sport that does require athletes to fork out a lot of the bills themselves have begun to let's say catch up to Nagal. He recently had an interview with a news agency PTI or Press Trust of India wherein he went into some detail about the let's say struggles that he's had despite being in his own words the top ranked athlete and someone who has actually done better than anyone else in the sport in recent times yet not only is he struggling for finances but he's also struggling for support from what he feels is a lack of an infrastructure it's a pretty interesting interview and what i'll do in this video is i'll go over some of the salient points he picked out and we'll just discuss them in short First off, he's talked about the lack of financial support and he says that it's so hard to find financial support in India. To be honest, I do not know what to do. I have given up. I have only 900 euros, which is approximately 80,000 rupees in my bank right now. Now, this might not seem like it's someone going through hard times, but when you take a look at how it is the sport of tennis works, you'd understand why this figure is such a big problem. In tennis, you're not necessarily an employee, let's say, or, uh, you know, you're not particularly, uh, uh, you, you don't have a contract with anyone. What it is, is that you are essentially an independent contractor. And if you're an independent contractor, then you're reliant on two things. You're reliant on uh, prize earnings as well as sponsorships. Now, obviously, if you reach a level where you are good enough, then you're consistently competing in tournaments at the ATP or WTA level for women's players. Then more often than not, you'll end up recouping a lot of money in terms of prize money. But you're still having to spend on your own travel to keep your coaches or your hotel accommodation and gear everything possible you are spending a lot of money on. It is no two ways about it, a very, very expensive sport, which is why this figure is a major problem. And he goes on to further elucidate on this issue. He says that I don't have anything in savings. I am breaking even. I cannot say I live a very good life or where I can say I don't need to work. I didn't earn anything in the last two years. Now, when he says I didn't earn anything, what he means is that he didn't earn anything excessive. As he says, he's breaking even. Now, breaking even is a financial term for when, uh, say, you're investing in something or you're putting money into something in the hopes that you get back money, but you're getting back pretty much exactly what you're putting in. So say, for instance, if he spent a lakh, over one particular time period, then what he's getting back, would it be in terms of prize money and whatnot, would be about a lakh as well. So he's not actually making any money off the sport, yet he's still on the professional tour and trying to compete with the hopes that with a few more breakthroughs, he'd be able to compete more consistently at the ATP tour, make more prize money, and then therefore fund himself. In fact, as he himself admitted, he's pretty much invested whatever prize money he's got back into his own career. So. He's not actually making any money, which when you consider the fact that Nagel is 26 years old and when he says the last two years, remember in the last two years, he's had multiple issues. He was actually at a point where he didn't have enough money to continue training and then touring. And then he ended up contracting COVID. He suffered from an injury crisis. So there were a lot of things going wrong with Sumit Nagel. And as he says, he said the support that was there, well, it wasn't really there. As he says, he's saying that I am lacking support despite being India's number one player. I am the only player to qualify for Grand Slams, to win a match at the Olympics. Still, I'm not in tops. Now, tops, of course, is the uh, top Olympic podium scheme, which is something that uh, is initiated by the government of India, which allows athletes, let's say, you know, uh, access to funds that allows them extra training. And these are funds that someone like a Nagel could actually use. Because again, as I said, tennis is a very expensive sport. You're basically footing all of your own bills and hoping that you can make it far enough into, uh, you know, say ATP events or WTA events or Grand Slams. And just to give you an idea of how uh, much the disparity in money really is, 
Sumit Nagal's biggest earnings in 2022 came when he made it to the qualifiers, or 2023, beg pardon, came when he was in the qualifiers of the US Open. Bear in mind, the qualifiers, not even the first round. He lost in the first round of the qualifiers and still ended up pocketing about $22,000. Just to give you an example of just how much money there is to be made in the sport of tennis and why it is that people prefer actually, let's say, making it further and further. Why the incentive is right there, it's for the money. And this Despite losing in the first round of the qualifiers, he made that much. But as he says, he's not getting any other kind of support. And to be fair, he does have, let's say, a government job. He does, of course, have a little bit of money that comes in from, uh, you know, uh, his tennis academies. But otherwise, there's no major sponsor who's footing most of his bills. So in essence, it's basically a cycle of win some money, reinvest that money. And as he says, he's not got access to tops. And despite the fact that he's actually, you know, he did play in the Olympics. He won a match in the Olympics in uh, Tokyo. He has, of course, made it to uh, Grand Slams. When I say made it, he means in singles, by the way, not doubles, because there are Indian players who play in doubles but he means in singles so it is actually a pretty bad situation all around for him and in fact he goes on to talk about the notion of uh, you know india as a sporting nation then he says that look we're a nation of 1.4 billion people but why do we not make it to the high levels because the guidance is missing in tennis, we are very far away from competing at the top. And I think this is something that a lot of people have realized about the sport is that it's inherently a very expensive sport. And Indian tennis as a whole has been on a decline. Again, you've not really seen much in the way of uh, single stars coming up from the tennis field. And truth be told, whichever way you may want to spin it, the sad reality is that most of the money, fame, and in fact, the public glare comes if you're a singles tennis player. People don't care that much about the double side of things. So that is why players who are doubles only either have to be ridiculously good to get the attention. Say like what uh, Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati were, or what uh, Ron Bapanna was and still is to an extent at this level. But otherwise, if you're not competing at the highest level in those, you get very little attention. You get more attention if you're competing in the singles. And India has not had many single stars. So as he says, and he made very clear in this interview, where he said that I do believe I could potentially reach at least a decent level wherein I'm actually earning from the sport rather than breaking even. But I just need some time and I need a little bit of support. Unfortunately for him, that support is not very forthcoming. Because again, and you can understand why it's a double-edged sword. Because tennis is an expensive sport. Where are you going to find corporates who are going to be okay investing that much money because the truth is that when it comes to corporate sponsorships they are looking for some sort of a return a big enough return would be if he was consistently qualifying for like the round of 16 quarter finals but this is a guy who sadly is not even getting that push to make it into the first or second round of singles but it's a vicious cycle and should be told you can't really say which comes first all you know for sure is that this man is the number one ranked indian tennis player and he too admits that I have pretty much given up because I don't see there being too much support, which is a sad indictment of how sport is at times when you're outside the glare of sports like, say, cricket, where, you know, you know there's a system or an ecosystem that exists which will protect players, even those who don't necessarily make it to the highest level. Here, Sumit Nagal is at the highest level for his country, but is still struggling to make, as he puts it, a good enough living. Will things be done about this? One would hope, because again, he's someone who does have plenty of promise and despite the fact that he's probably not going to be a Grand Slam winner or anything, might still have a decent career ahead of him if he gets some support. But that is the key, if he gets some support. What are your thoughts on what it is that Sumit Nagal has had to say in this particularly interesting interview? You can let us know that in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, share it with your friend, subscribe to the channel, tap that bell icon, leave us a comment, follow us on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Don't forget to download the Sports The Cap and if you're already on the channel, go right ahead and check out some other videos that we've done. For now though, from my side, it is bye-bye.